I've only got to go to any traveller's cemetery to see how young some of them are when they've died. I mean, how many times do you hear about people taking ill now with heart attacks and strokes and the like? Well, when I've been in hospital, they've been as nice as pie till they found out I'm a traveller. Then they've been ignorant, like they'd make you wait till last or they'd just ignore you as if you were nothing, you know, or telling an old gypsy, let her get off. The thing is as well, stress, I mean, especially with men, you know, it's a massive thing, I think. I mean, trying to earn your living is getting harder. I mean, calling's getting harder. Anybody will tell you that. I don't think travellers go to doctors as often as country people would. They don't look after themselves as good as what country people would, would they? That's the way we're brought up and bred up. As a man, I don't want to go to the doctors, you know, in case they find something really bad. I'm, I'm scared of that, I'll admit it. I don't go to the doctors. No, I don't go, except I'm in bad pain and then I go to the hospital. Because if you go into a hospital or anything, you've got to wait for hours. And if they know you're a traveller, you're the last one. But women is the same thing with women. You've plucked up your courage to go to a doctor and you get in there and it's a man. A traveller is a woman of religion, but no other man can look at them, only their husbands. That's the way our grandmothers were brought up and our mothers. But, I mean, there are some good ones as well. If you get a good one, you'll travel miles, but that's no good if you get ill 200 miles away, is it? Wherever I am, I'll either ring them up or I'll ask them to come and see me because I trust them. And I can tell them anything, anything yeah. you know, my own problems, anything. I don't think a lot of people who are in the health service, you know, they, they realise that we're an ethnic minority. So I don't think they think we've got a different culture. Health's always been important to gypsies and travellers, that and the cleanliness, because it's needed both for travel and for work. The old gypsy proverb says that we value three things, freedom, health and love. For without freedom there can be no health, and without health love can't be enjoyed. But if we value our health above anything else. Why then is it in such a bad state? My name is Richard O'Neill and I'm a Gypsy Health campaigner from the northeast of England. We're sitting in Gypsy woman Mally Dow's home in the northwest of England discussing the findings of the first ever scientific study looking at the health of Gypsy travellers in England. The report called the health status of Gypsy travellers in England is the result of a study carried out by the University of Sheffield's School of Health and Related Research. What they found out is enough to shock anyone. If you're a gypsy or a traveller, you should know what they found out, because it's about you and your family. But this CD isn't just about you, it's for you, because for the next 20 minutes we'll be talking about exactly how bad the health of gypsies and travellers is, what has caused it and what we can all do to improve it. In it, you'll be hearing directly from the people who carried out the research and some of the gypsies and travellers they interviewed. You'll also be hearing a fair bit from me too, Together with Mally, we'll be getting to the bottom of this very important issue. Professor Glenis Parry, you were in charge of this project. How and why did the project get started? We realised there'd been, never been a proper study in England using proper measures of health status. So we, we're really trying to do something new. Patrice Van Cleanput, you are a health visitor with long experience of working with gypsies and travellers and the person who handled the day-to-day -day contact with them and the project Health Visitors. Why is it so important to involve gypsies and travellers right from the start and then continue to involve them every step of the way? Uh, well, we think it's really important that you don't do research on people that you research with them and that gypsies and travellers are best placed to know their own issues and how we should go about the research. And by involving gypsies and travellers right from the start, they had ownership of it and were able to give us very helpful advice all along the way on the best way to carry it out. What were the main findings of the report? Well, the two things we did in the study, we did a survey of health in gypsies and travellers compared with other people of the same age and the same sex in other walks of life. And the main findings were that the gypsies and travellers had much worse health on the whole than people in other situations. For example, they had more chest pain, more problems breathing, more arthritis, and generally their health was poorer. They had more mental health difficulties, for example, depression and anxiety. It seemed really as if this was a group with a lot of health needs, but with fewer services and less access to services. And Patrice found out something about that in the in-depth interviews. We found that there was quite a lot of reluctance for people to access GPs and health services in general. And there were a lot of different possible reasons for this that were put forward. 
One was the fear of prejudice. There's a lot of experience this came out that people on an everyday basis experience prejudice, not, not particularly amongst health services, but because they experienced it everywhere, they came to expect it from health services as well. If we left here now, right, if we hadn't in the doctor, all, all the doctor says they're all full up. They're booked up, booked up, booked up, booked up the whole way, like. But still, if an Asian guy or a black guy or anyone else can walk in and they can... Like here, a couple of weeks ago now, I went up here to, to get uh, registered. But then he got my form and, then he, and when they found out it was a traveller's site, they wouldn't take me on. There was also a fear of not being understood and not being able to make themselves understood. And this, along with other fears about what might be wrong, prevented people going to the doctors as often or as early as they might. There were some very positive attitudes that gypsies and travellers had that also made it more likely that they would go to the doctors at the last minute rather than the earliest opportunity. For instance, there was quite a a strong belief in self-reliance, getting on with it, making the best of things. And so people might delay going to the doctors until they were really ill. But of course, if that happens, things can progress a long way and be more serious by the time they do get there, which feeds into the fear that, well, by then it's too late. They often think there's nothing that can be done about things. I mean, cancer, for example. So they feel there's no point in trying to get any medical help anyway. What came across very strongly was an extreme fear about cancer. Now, most people have a fear about cancer, but amongst gypsies and travellers, it was very strong. And it would seem that because of large families and the number of deaths that get known about and heard about frequently, it might be the same death but heard about from many different people, it would seem to people that everybody died of cancer. I had cancer and I had to go in hospital and get rid of it. But I had it six years and as I think I was crying out for help but just never got it. Never got no help. Now I was going to do Lally, it was sending me divvy in the head. Looking at it now, I was poorly, I was very, very poorly. And definitely I thought it was going divvy in the head. You know, I was round when it near enough split me and my husband up. It's a good job we are strong because it nearly split us up. And we were pulling on all bits of ground, so I was on the roadside constant. It is six years after now, but it took 12 years out of my life. And that fear, as I already mentioned, people didn't go to the doctors as early as they could anyway, so that by the time cancer is detected, it's often at a very late stage. Whereas, had they gone earlier and picked it up earlier, it could be treated. But if that's not people's experience, then cancer can seem like a death sentence. It was manly if you went to the doctors all the time. Years and years ago, I'd never bothered with doctors until the last couple of years now, even if I was ill. Did you find any difference between English or Irish travellers? Well, we looked at this, but in fact, we didn't really know. The health of Irish travellers and English gypsies were very similar across almost everything. The number of health problems reported in the gypsy and traveller group were between twice as many or up to five times as many problems as in the uh, other groups. So I think that's quite a big scale of difference, really. One thing that was very striking was the number of women amongst gypsies and travellers who have miscarriages or stillbirths or have lost children at one time or another, either a death of a young baby or, or even older children. But equally, there were some problems that we couldn't find a major difference. Uh, for example, in strokes, diabetes or cancer, but that could be because of other factors, for example, people not reporting them or not knowing that they've had that problem. As I said before, we're sitting in Mally's home in a very pleasant part of the northwest, and I'm wondering why our health is so bad, and in some cases worse than everybody else's. Is anyone to blame? Is it our own fault, or that of the settled community, or is it a mixture of both? I know your study didn't specifically look at what caused bad health among gypsies and travellers, but did you find some clues? Earlier you mentioned education. Do you think ignorance has played a role? For example, it appears from the report that there is a lack of knowledge and awareness of health issues amongst gypsies and travellers. Does that mean that we aren't interested in our health, or is it that we are put off from finding out more? I certainly don't think that gypsies and travellers aren't interested in their health. We did find that there were some reasons why they were put off from finding more. And people acknowledged that they had difficulty with reading and writing. 
And they were embarrassed about this on the whole and didn't want to identify them as gypsies and travellers by admitting to that. So that certainly put them off situations where that might be obvious. They often did want more information, but it wasn't available in forms that they could access. So more information that they could listen to rather than read would, would definitely be more helpful. So certainly there was a lack of awareness of what symptoms are important and other, other things that they did want information about. But there is also a lot of ignorance in the healthcare service about gypsies and travellers, isn't there? Yes, that's right. Most of the people who who do control health services have little knowledge about gypsies and travellers and they might look at black and ethnic minorities but don't realise that gypsies and travellers are included in that. Travellers do expect and, and often experience blatant discrimination. On the other hand, some do get good care and when they do, they really value that. Health visitors who work only with gypsies and travellers in our study, who are aware of their culture, were especially valued. And some travellers who'd seen good doctors who knew their whole family were also aware of their culture, were also highly valued. We wrote to all the health, our health authorities and primary care trusts and found that of those who replied, and that was only a, a minority of them, only half of those, in fact fewer than half, had really any understanding of how many gypsies and travellers were living locally and where they were. And only one in ten had any specific plans about how to give travellers a good service. Uh, I think that's going to change over the next uh, few years, but at the moment it's not a very good picture at all. I'm wondering why the report shows that gypsies and travellers living in houses have more long-term illnesses, a poorer state of health and anxiety. Why do those who don't travel have the poorest health? We uh, certainly found that the house travellers had, uh, on the whole, the worst health and particularly more um, anxiety. And it probably two possible reasons for this. One is that those who aren't fit, who've got a long-term illness or disability can't travel and are more likely to go into housing. But another reason might be that those people in houses have other stresses, for example, being isolated and cut off from families and communities, so that that could actually cause anxiety or contribute to health problems. They've completely took our life away from us, so therefore we're not living in the country doing what we used to do, and we're settling down Even like cares. gorgeous. Yeah. You see, we don't like to walk anywhere. We could buy a shopping in bulk, right. stick it in a fridge, instead of buying it fresh yeah. every day. Yeah. We said, don't be lazy, can't be bothered. <laughs> yeah, we do need to change the way we're living. A lot of travellers felt it was a Hobson's choice. They, they felt that there was no choice but to move into a house because living on the roadside or trying to get a legal place to stop wasn't open to them and housing was the only thing that they could eventually do and that would be an added stress if it wasn't really your free choice to move into a house. Say there's a hundred sites in England, 80 of them sites is next to a dump. I was staying in a site in Birmingham the other day to hear the truth yeah and I was over there for about three or four weeks and the long tails is like that, that lent there underneath my trailer. When they make the sites, they're on old tips, it ain't is. they? Or they're on somewhere what, next to a train line, or like Leicester next to that bus Leicester station. Right, it, yeah. it made my uh, sister's girl really bad. She had to move because yeah. of the asthma. Mm. She, you know, with the fumes used to fill up in the trailer every day, the fumes off the engines. Yes. So they don't, it's the government that's not thinking healthy for us. They just <clears> shove them there, they're only gypsies, they're rubbish. Do you think we also have bad health because the way society treats us? For example, the lack of good sites and access to health and education services must have a really big impact on our health. Certainly when we surveyed the sites, some of the sites, not all, but some of them were in really unhealthy places and that could affect people's health. But equally it reflects the way um, gypsies or travellers treat themselves. For example, not looking after one's health, unhealthy effects, for example, of smoking, being under stress. Plus, of course, if you think, oh, well, there's nothing I can do about it, you put up with having health problems and you don't bother to take care of yourself, that could play a, a role as well. Patrice, reading the report, it seems that when you take other causes like smoking and lack of education, the main reason why our health is so bad, it's just the fact that we are gypsies and travellers. Is that right? 
No, I don't think you can say that. Um, th there are many, I think it's more to do with the factors connected with being a traveller that um, can affect their health. It's unlikely to be just the fact that you are a gypsy or a traveller. For example, we know that there was a lot of relationship between smoking and ill health for anyone. And the gypsies smoked more than other people. And also, it's generally true that the relationships between ill health and education and their sex differences too. For example, even when you take those things into account, women are more likely than uh, traveller men to be anxious. You get examples of how we know these associations for anybody are there, but for the gypsies and travellers, there was an extra factor that we just couldn't account for, the bad health, something to do with the experience of being in that group. Another thing that came out of the interviews was a very positive attitude towards the family responsibility, family looking after themselves. And again, this was another factor why people might not go to the doctors as early because they would look after their own. And it was certainly a factor in not seeking home care services. And the flip side is that there are many more travellers acting as carers for family members, which has an effect on the carer's health ultimately. My girl is going to be a nurse but she will not tell them doctors in there that she is a traveller. Mm -hmm. Not until she's got her feet under the table, then she's going to say, I'm a travelling girl. If any travellers come in, she is going to help them. If a load of travellers does come in, she'll know a little mm -hmm. bit more than the others how to angle her. She can understand them. Well, Richard, I think this report will raise questions from gypsies and travellers who might ask, what good is a survey? What good's it going to do us? Does this mean that doctors, nurses and hospitals will start treating gypsies and travellers better? Or that it'll be easier to get registered at a doctor's? How's this going to be enforced? I think you're right to have doubts, Mally. I mean, people have been studying gypsies and travellers for as long as we've been around and not much has changed for us, has it? The difference with this survey, though, it's the first real look at gypsies and traveller health in a way that the government can't ignore because it's been funded by the government and it's been written by some very well respected experts it's also been guided by gypsies and travellers themselves Professor Parry, will this health report change anything for gypsies and travellers? Not by itself, no. I mean we were asked to do a piece of research to produce some answers, some facts, some information but that then needs to be used in order to have any effect if it's just uh, forgotten about and no one does anything about it, then obviously it won't make any difference. Uh, it's important, I think, that people take the messages from this report and other work uh, around and use it to make a difference. But you also made some recommendations in your report, didn't you? What were they? Yes, we did. We thought the health service should work in partnership with gypsy and traveller communities rather than excluding them. And we think that's quite possible and we give some good examples of where that's happening. We thought that the role of specialist or dedicated health visitors was quite important because they have a community development and liaison role so they can act as an intermediary between traveller communities and the health services. A big thing we thought came out of our work was to improve the way health service staff can work with gypsies and travellers so that they don't feed into this expectation of racism or uh, treating people disrespectfully or not understanding where they're coming from. We think there's quite a lot could be done about that quite simply. When my kids was little, they used to be really ignorant when we was on the roadsides like... Well, you know, we don't want to look after you, like, go to another doctor or go to another. On one occasion, we had to have the police out to get one doctor to look at me, sister-in-law's little boy, and he got malangitis. And we had to have the police out to make the doctor look at him. An important thing at the moment is gypsies and travellers are a bit invisible because they're not recorded anywhere that they exist officially in official statistics in the health service because we do ethnic monitoring but I don't think the health service routinely monitors uh, the needs of gypsies and travellers and ethnic minority and that would be an important step forward if that could start to happen. There were quite a few other recommendations about helping GPs get travellers registered properly and to understand their needs for access to general practice. Finally I think 
Health isn't just about the health service, it's about different parts of the government working together and many aspects of traveller life that have an impact on health aren't actually the Department of Health, they might be to do with other government departments. So we recommended the idea of an, a task force going across all the aspects of government relating to the health of travellers. We thought that would be widely welcomed. Having another report doesn't mean that things will change overnight, but it does give us the facts to demand that the government does something to change the situation. Demand? Now there's a word. But when a gypsy or traveller demands anything, they usually end up locked up. I suppose we could start by sending a copy of it to every surgery in the country and then have it brought up at every practice meeting that includes receptionists. Because increasing GP registration means getting past hostile receptionists. Her attitude is so important because you've got to get past her to get to the doctor or the practice nurse. What about you, Richard? I think, again, people don't understand gypsies and travellers and they don't understand the fact that maybe people will turn up because they've got a big family, there's quite a lot of them will turn up and I think if they see four or five people turn up they could be the best behaved children in the world but they think oh here's a big mob and they're immediately on their guard, they think oh blimey what's going to happen here and then I think they get treated badly because of that. And as well you know at times of death we're not treated well. I've had personal experience of this. We have our own customs and our own traditions of what we do with our dead relatives. And that has been laughed at in my case that we wanted to bring my grandmother home to lay her out and do our own customs. We were treated with scorn and we had to explain we shouldn't have to do things like that. It's painful enough we've lost someone we care about. I honestly think a lot of it is because they just don't think, and like I said you know, before, they don't understand that we are an ethnic minority. We might look the same, but you know, like you said, with customs and stuff like that, they're very, very different. What this report shows now is that they need to get some changes in there. I'd like to see the people in the health service start to listen. They should find out who you are and what you are. Not just say, oh, there they are, travellers, they stink, the dirty. They should listen, open their ears and listen and, and learn from us. They can learn a lot if they listen to us. So the health of gypsies and travellers is much worse than other people's and that's official. It might worry some people that it's so bad, but I think it gives us a real opportunity to really do something about improving it. This report can help us to inform the decision makers. It gives us proper evidence to show people just how bad things are, but also how they can be improved. Organisations who represent gypsies and travellers and gypsies and travellers themselves now have a proper resource which should make it easier to campaign for changes in health provision for gypsies and travellers. I would personally like to thank the Department of Health for funding this project, the team at Sheffield University for carrying it out in such a traveller friendly way and finally to all the gypsies and travellers and those who work with them who have been and continue to be so involved.